Woo! That's a success. This is both a wing and an ionic thruster in one. And it might just be a step in the right direction. You see, for the better part of a year, I've been trying to optimize an ionic thruster for flight, and after I designed my first BSI thruster, it set in motion a transatlantic battle. Responding across the ocean, my friend and fellow creator Joel designed his own ionic thruster, one which worked really well and quite frankly, outperformed mine. So I bounced back with my BSI Mark II, which moved twice as much air at twice the velocity. Refusing to kneel to an American, Joel responded with a second design of his own, one that was brilliantly simple and compact. All this back and forth, while super great for competitive innovation, led me to wonder if we're even on the right path. Look, to design a no moving part ionic thrust airplane, which is my goal, we need to minimize weight and components, not the other way around. And maybe the best way to do that is to incorporate ionic thrusters into the wings themselves. Well, I know a thing or two about plasma, and Peter Sreepel, he knows a thing or two about wings. He's built and flown planes for a decade, so after we shared thoughts, I got to work designing an ultralight wing design with built-in thrusters printing several iterations and finally arriving at a weight and power that offered some promise. This video is sponsored by Curiosity Stream. To fully understand this ionic thrust wing idea, we need to go back a few months to when the days were full of photons, ethanol, and bad decisions. I was watching the Blue Angels over Lake Washington, and in a moment of clarity, I realized that modern fighter jets aren't airplanes with jet engines attached. They basically are jet engines with wings attached. The thrust component is incorporated into the structure of the airplane itself. So I thought, what if we incorporate ionic thrust into the frame of a glider? Glider wings are huge, designed to create lift from really slow speeds, and might offer the best testing platform. After a few cups of bean water at my favorite cafe, and conversations with a fuzzy friend, I sketched up something that might just have potential. Wings and airframe design really aren't something I have that much experience in. I do understand the basics, <laughs> uh, and that's about it. Luckily, when I was at Open Sauce in San Francisco, I met a variety of other creators, one in particular who can make anything fly. And I do mean anything. For example, this is his Dremel-powered helicopter, a leaf blower-powered airplane, which actually flew quite nicely, a PC fan-powered ultralight plane, and this is a hand drill-powered plane. He also attempted to build an airplane entirely out of food, which flew for about 17 milliseconds and then tried to fight the Earth. I figured he'd have great insight on how to get this project off the ground, so to speak. Uh, yeah, so we chatted for a bit. You recall the picture that I sent you? Yeah. It has to be a glider format, right? Like it has to be a slow moving big airfoil. Very slow moving airfoil, but it's also gonna be um, very low wing loading, but it's gonna have a huge aspect ratio. So very, very large wings, large slender wings. Okay. Would you be interested in coming up with a specific airfoil design or aspect ratio that you think would be best? I will have some stuff to send your way, at least with an airfoil choice. Yeah. Because I want to look at some of those uh, super light rubber band powered airplanes that they do. I want to see if our approach on the top of the wing is better or worse. So. Okay. This is going to be like 9 out of 10 on the hard scale. <laughs> That's good to know. From what I gathered, building a functional ionic thrust wing was plausible, but going to be super difficult. But you know what? That's uh, <laughs> never really stopped my engineering attempts before. And as this one guy used to say, We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Luckily, Peter shot over some airfoil designs which were designed for low speed flight, and that gave me a starting point. Prior to building an entire ionic thrust wing, it's smart to focus on a small section of the wing first and then optimize the design from there. So I focused my time on a 12 centimeter section of wing, minimizing the weight and then maximizing the ionic thrust. So there's a story here. This is a Creality printer I was given at Open Sauce. It works great. Well, Prusa from Prusa Printers was there and autographed it as a sign of rebellion. <laughs> Absolutely savage.
Here's what I'm working with. It's a four inch section of wing with four mini airfoils up top. The leading edges, those are all covered in aluminum foil tape. That's the electrical ground. And I don't know if you see the razor blades on the trailing edge, those are the high voltage positive. Um, each airfoil can slide forward and backwards about a quarter of an inch. This allows me to test various spacing distances to see what provides the best thrust. If my ionic thrusters from the past have taught me anything, it's that closer spacing will have best results. For power, I'll be using these stun gun modules, which put out a family-friendly 30,000 volts. I'm gonna test three different spacings under one configuration. The first gap is nine millimeters, middle 11, and back gap 13 millimeters. Okay, nine mil feels really weak. Wow. What about velocity? 0.4 meters a second, that's really bad. What about 11? feels a little bit stronger. 0.5 meters still sucks, but it's better. And this is 11 mil, the longest gap. 0.6. That's not going to cut it. Uh, pretty terrible start. And I know what you're thinking. Those tests weren't particularly accurate because the meter was a different distance from each segment. You're correct. Um, I also went ahead and tested every distance and every spacing. And the max velocity I found was 0.6 meters a second. All right, that worked about as well as my last relationship. I seriously thought this design would do better than a half a meter a second. That's not gonna cut it, hands down. I think the issue might be the fact that the airfoils downstream are directly obstructing the airflow from the previous ionic thrust segment. So I went back to the drawing board and completely redesigned the ionic thrust segments. With this version, the ground was completely out of the way of airflow. Feeling confident this would be an improvement, I commanded my little Prusa to print away and in a few minutes I had a new version. The high voltage positive attaches to the razor up top and the ground is connected to these parts wrapped in foil. The razor points into open air and the grounds aren't in the path of airflow. I was really excited to test this. What am I working with here? Ooh, that's a huge jump already. That's huge, massive jump. I'm working with 1.5 now. That's a huge increase in velocity. I wanna see that airflow. <laughs> wow, that's actually a lot of airflow. I then modified the design further by replacing the foil-covered plastic grounds with aluminum streamlined tubing. This proved to be a good decision. That's another mild improvement. With that, I felt confident and assembled the wing in preparation for tests. Before further testing, there's something to be said about keeping your mind fully engaged in learning even between projects. And that's what I've been doing recently using CuriosityStream. Packed full of award-winning original documentaries, films, shows, and series that you pretty much can't find anywhere else, CuriosityStream has its bases covered. With a focus on science, tech, and history, CuriosityStream is perfect for anyone who wants to learn. Their documentaries are really informative, making it easy to just expand your knowledge on a variety of topics. And its deep library of content doesn't stop at STEM. It also hits on nature, music, food, and more, so pretty much content for everybody. You can watch this content on your TV, computer, or mobile devices, making it super easy to watch your favorite documentaries anytime, anywhere. And for me, that means one thing. <sighs> Space documentaries. New content drops every week, meaning there's always new stuff to watch, and their plans are crazy affordable, like less than $5 a month. And that gives you access to thousands of hours of high-quality documentaries and series. Go to curiositystream.com slash plasma or scan the QR code for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. And for my fans, use the promo code plasma to get 25% off. On to some tests. At this point, I'd consider the prototype section of the ionic thrust wing complete, but when it comes to testing, I have no idea what the hell to expect. Will I get four separate sections, each providing one and a half meters a second in parallel, or will they add in series and create four, five, six meters a second of airflow in the trailing direction? That's what I'm really hoping for. That's what I need for this to work. So let's find out. Wiring each segment to its own power source, I gave it power and crossed my fingers. Come on. Uh, <laughs> Somehow, it had become weaker. A second test confirmed the same results. Uh, this makes zero sense. Naturally, the next approach was to try powering these segments in parallel. 
with all grounds wired together and all positives wired together. Come on, come on. Two, three, two, five, two, seven, three point oh. I saw three point two in there. Two nine again. There was a three one. <laughs> this is a huge improvement. Having power style figured out, I wondered if decreasing segment spacing might make a difference in output as well. So after a couple tests, oh, three four, three five. The 3.2 turned into 3.5. At this point, it occurred to me that testing airflow at the edge of a table isn't that efficient. With the wing segment sitting right on the edge, little eddy currents were going to develop behind the thickness of the table, which would reduce the velocity output. Elevating the wing above the table would bring better results. 3.7, 4.4, 4.3. I hit four meters a second. Barely four, but I'll take it. And testing it with dry ice later backed up the eddy current theory too. Oh. Look at that, you can see two eddy currents going right here, feeding into the main stream. Oh. This really helped visualize airflow on the trailing end, which gave me an idea for leading edge. So what I hope to see with this setup is the dry ice fog being sucked over the airfoil and then also weaving in between the ionic thrust segments. That'll give a really good approximation and a good visualization of the air flowing through the system. Yeah, you can see it. That's amazing. Oh, wow. With four meters a second established, it was time to focus on the weight. I was not excited for this part. Collectively, the first design was pretty heavy. All parts in it weighed 200 grams. So I went back and redesigned the airfoil to be lighter and eliminate the need for acrylic sides. It turned out super nicely and felt much lighter in my hand. All parts in, it now weighed 133 grams, which was a 33% reduction in weight. Considering the power source weighed 87 grams, I wanted to reduce the weight further. Bouncing back to on shape, I removed as much plastic airfoil as I could without sacrificing strength. After about 10 hours of printing and curiously waiting, I had a new airfoil I could cover with thin plastic sheeting. Whereas the first airfoil weighed 100 grams, this one was only 45. Looking at the razor blades, they were overkill and led to ionic segments weighing in at 15 grams. Replacing them with thinner blades, serrated ones at that, and shortening the 3D printed frame led to a segment of only 10 grams. All parts in, the new prototype weighed 100 grams, which was a 50% reduction in weight. This was a huge deal. So I gave it the dry ice treatment and the results were amazing. Oh yeah, man. Woo! That is super cool. And here you can see the air drawn over the leading edge. Whew, I love the fog display, but wait until you see this wing in the dark. When powered up, the wing glows an eerie corona purple and time exposures do it complete justice. At this point, I just wanted to see the wing move, but providing freedom of movement for such a small section of wing that's still attached to its power source was going to be really difficult. So after a few too many cups of bean water, I came up with something that not only provides freedom of movement, but also the measurement of thrust and velocity. So a balance point, an armature, power source and high voltage modules, and ionic thrust wing, able to move freely from the ground and ready to be tested. <sighs> Let's give it a try. Oh, yeah. It's working. It's working. This is really, really interesting. God, this is so useful to see. <laughs> this is so interesting to watch. <laughs> Just going around and around. That's a success. At max speed, it reached just under 60 RPM, and with a circumference of two meters, that's two meters per second. Not quite fast enough to fly, but this is only a 12 centimeter section of wing with the wind resistance of 50 centimeters of armature. So essentially, this goes two meters per second while dragging along dead weight, which as I discovered is really painful to stop. Oh, gosh, that hurt really bad. Oh, oh. Okay, here's the magic. Excluding the 202 grams from the base, the armature weighs 522. 
75 grams of that is the arm itself, and the rest split between two masses, one being 175 and the other 231, plus a balance weight. They both rotate about an offset center, with one arm being 29 centimeters and the other being 22. The wing's final velocity is 2 meters per second after 12 seconds of force being applied. I tried to calculate the thrust for over an hour, and after a few close attempts, ChatGPT had it pinned at 44 grams. Honestly, I went through tons of iterations, and this wing segment can be improved further. For example, using a higher current power source will increase velocity output, and using wire instead of razor blades will shave off more weight. I plan to incorporate these changes when I build out the full ionic thrust wing. Make sure you subscribe to be kept up to date, and leave your thoughts on this video down below because I love the feedback. I'd like you to ask yourself, is it possible we're on the precipice of a new era of flight? A solid state airplane. It's something that I'm super passionate about and I totally believe is possible. And because of that, we have to try. Thank you for watching and you stay classy.